Good morning boys and girls and welcome to another assembly. At assembly we often talk about our school values of nurture, respect and inspire. I must say boys and girls you are really inspiring me at the moment with all the fantastic work that you've all been doing. I know everybody's got lots on at home with some people whose parents are maybe still working or some people who are out doing their jobs outside and I know that at home I'm also helping to try and teach my two little girls Olivia and Freya. But one thing that we really do enjoy doing together is reading books. Books are very important and if anything else, I would just love you to read a book with your family every day. We thought that we would like to share one of our favourite books with you. Now it's a little bit cheeky and it's a little bit funny, but what we need to do is remember to laugh through these difficult times. So I'm going to read to you, I Need a New Bum. I Need a New Bum by Don McMillan and Ross Kinnaird. I need a new bum. Mine's got a crack. I can see in the mirror a crack at the back. Did I do it on the slide? Or on the banister inside? Or when I jumped my PMX? Or with the fart that happened next? Of course, the fart. That's what blew my bum apart. Split the thing clean in two. Now I wonder what to do. I need a new one, a green one or a blue one. A fat one or a thin one, a wood one or a tin one. Why not an arty farty bum? Or not to be forgotten with watercolours on the top and a mural on the bottom. Or yellow spotted. Purple dotted, a bum with colour, a bum with flair, a bum as bright as I dare to wear, a bum as bright as Dad's underwear. Or maybe an alien's bum made from a metal like titanium. Fireproof, bulletproof, bombproof. I'd like a bum that's safety rated, the right bum. A night's bum, a bum that's armour plated. What about a bumper chrome? Why not, I say, from a 1960s sport coupe, one made in the USA. With accessories to complement, like strips of silver smoothly bent, a set of lights left and right for backing round in the night. With a bumper bum, I won't be scared because bumper cracks can be repaired. But a bumper bum is huge. A bumper bum weighs a ton. I've changed my mind. I want a lighter one. A rocket bum, all fire and thrust. A robo bum, now that bum's a must. No. I think it's all too late. This cracked bum is my fate. I'm here on my own in this cracked bum zone. No one to care, no one to share. Wait, what's that I hear? This is outrageous and bum cracks contagious. Dad, your bum crack is showing. And Dad, there's no way of knowing just how far it's going. Boys and girls, I hope you really enjoyed this book. Please, if you've got any books that you would like to share with me, then send them to me on Twitter or to the Be The Email account. Take care and have lots of fun. Bye. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome along to another assembly. This week, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about Article 28 which is the right to an education, which looks a little bit different just now. And we just heard from Mrs. Mann there, who was telling us all about um, books and reading one of our, our girls' favourite stories. We really do take uh, books for granted in this country. We have them in shops and um, we can easily borrow them from the library. We've all got access through Bug Club um, in our school to thousands and thousands of books 
and I'm sure each of your homes are, are filled with books. And while we do take books for granted, there are many boys and girls around the world that cannot get their hands on a book. Um, they don't even have the luxury of having a, a school textbook. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that in assembly today. So I'm going to tell you Mina's story. Mina's a, a girl who lives in Afghanistan. And Afghanistan is a, a country where it's not been easy to get an education for nearly 20 years, mainly because of war. For 20 years, hardly any teachers have been trained and there's been very little textbooks printed. For the first 10 years of Mina's life, a group called the Taliban controlled Afghanistan. And the Taliban, they believed that girls did not need to be educated and they didn't allow girls or women to have jobs. Only boys were allowed to go to school. However, Mina's parents wanted her to have an education and although it was dangerous, Mina attended a secret school in her teacher's home. In 2002, the Taliban lost power and all children, including girls, were encouraged to return to school. The problem was how schools could open when many were in ruins and there were no textbooks, no pencils, no pens, no exercise books. As the organisation responsible for improving lives of children worldwide, UNICEF, they worked to help as many children get back to school as possible. Now Mina, she's able to go to school. She was the first people to turn up to school and collect her bag, books and pens, which had been provided by UNICEF. Mina says, I am pleased to be able to go to school. Now I am studying properly, and this is a great time for me and for my friends. I secretly went to school at the teacher's house because I knew that learning was important for me and for my future. But coming to a real school is the best thing. Above all, I am really excited that I will be able to take home books to read. For children in refugee camps, the struggle to get a decent education is even harder. Refugee camps are places that begin as temporary campsites when people have been forced to leave their homes. Maybe because of a war or a natural disaster, like an earthquake or a flood. These people have to leave their homes quickly and they come away with very little. Sometimes it can take quite a long time for agencies like UNICEF to get everything into the camps that the refugees might need. Many thousands of people might live in one refugee camp and they need essential supplies like water and shelter to be able to go on living their lives until they can return home. Sadly, sometimes people live in refugee camps for years because they cannot go home. For these children, education is incredibly important as it may be the only way they can make their way in an uncertain world. So I want you to think about that story boys and girls, and I want you to think about how school looks a little bit different for you just now. Our teachers are still working at home, setting out lessons. We're lucky enough to have access through Seesaw and to the internet and lots of books and activities for you to do. And it might feel a little bit strange just now. I mean, my office is anywhere I can find a quiet spot in the house. My boys' classroom is the desk down the, the table downstairs where they can work. Sometimes we're out in the garden. So it looks a little bit different just now. It made me think, it made me think, do we need a classroom to learn? I don't think we do. I think all we really need is a positive attitude that you can learn anywhere. I would really like to see some pictures. You can send them in through your, via your teachers, through a seesaw or onto the Beath Twitter page at Beath PS. Send us a picture. Where are you learning just now? And we can share all the wonderful places that you've been taking part in your homeschool learning. Take care, boys and girls, and we'll speak to you next week. Hola, buenos dias, que tal? Hi, boys and girls, how are you? Um, so, I just want to start this week's assembly by saying muchas gracias, which means thank you very much to all the boys and girls in Beath Primary School and Early Years 
for the amazing work that you're continuing to do at home. I would also like to say a massive thank you to all the adults who are helping and supporting all the boys and girls um, with all of the learning that's taking place at home. You are doing an incredible job and we are inspired by you. So thank you so much. Now for this week's assembly, I've decided to do something in Spanish. You know that I like to do some Spanish songs and games with you, so I don't want us to forget all our Spanish when we come back to school. So I thought it would be fun if we did a little trava lengua, and a trava lengua is a tongue twister. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some links on the school Twitter page. Now don't worry if you don't have Twitter because it also goes on to the school website and I'm going to ask all your teachers to share it on the learning journals for early years and seesaw for the primary school and it gives you a chance to have a look at some little video clips and learn a travel lengua. So I've learned one, um, I'm going to say it for you just now um, and hopefully it'll show you that it's not too tricky and the one I've learned is really short, it's just a few lines so don't worry if you watch some of the videos and think oh that's really long you don't have to do one of the long ones, or you can even just do a little section of one. You don't have to do the full thing. Okay, so here goes. Tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en un trigal. There we go. So that one is about three sad tigers eating wheat in a wheat field, which doesn't really make much sense. It's a bit, bit of nonsense, but that's okay because the important thing is that we're learning some Spanish and it's about repeating the same sounds over again. It's just a fun way to learn something. Okay, so once you have learned your Travalengua, could you please ask someone to film you? You can then share it on the school Twitter page, at BPS, a capital B, or you can send it to your teacher on Seesaw, or you can email it to the school email account, whichever is easiest for you. But we would love to see all of your amazing efforts at learning a Spanish tongue twister, una Travalengua. Okay, so hope you have lots of fun with this challenge, boys and girls. I'm missing you more and more as time's going on and I really can't wait to see you all again. Okay, so muchas gracias, adios, hasta luego. Hi everyone, I hope you're still safe and well. I'm still hugely impressed with all the work and effort that you've been putting into the activities that your teachers have put on Seesaw. As mentioned, it really is inspiring and you're doing a tremendous job, so keep it up. I've had the chance to work in the local community hub this week as well and I've been able to see a couple of you while I was there. It's been nice to get out of the house for a bit and see some different people. Um, working there has also been really inspiring for me because I've been able to see all the fantastic work that our staff and our catering team have been doing to support everyone, including those of you who are staying at home, so a huge thank you goes out to them as well. It could be easy to see from things you might see in the news that we can relax a little bit now, or you might be getting a bit fed up with the way things are at the moment, but it's important that now more than ever that we're sticking to our social distancing rules. We're staying at home unless it's necessary for us to leave or we'll get out for our daily exercise. We're trying to make sure that we're staying two metres apart between ourselves and other people, which is probably the most difficult actually because all you might want to do is play with your friends and we're washing our hands regularly and at least for 20 seconds so that we can keep ourselves and everyone else safe. I know that all the boys and girls that I've worked with this week in the hub have been trying to stick to these rules. Hopefully I might see some of you there the next time I'm there as well and I'll be able to speak to you soon. Take care and well done again everyone.